Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me a chance to uh, talk in this great workshop. So my name is Kenji Narioka. I'm from Denso. So currently I'm working and sensing around the department and uh, advanced safety business unit where we are developing our components for intelligent camera system for vehicles. And uh, at working in the business unit, so we aim to make actual serious products by transferring the advanced technology to the mass production. So to do that, we, uh, we can do that by ourselves and we have a lot of collaborators in startups and academia, including Riken. So uh, we appreciate Professor Suyama sensei and all other members from Riken for their great collaboration. And today I would like to uh, talk about deep learning. So uh, how deep learning can make roads safer and how we are going to apply this deep learning for our production. And yeah, I think, I guess, uh, some of you might be really tired because of a lot of mathematics and a lot of the intensive discussion, but I promise there is no equation in my slide and it's very short, relatively short. So just relax and enjoy my talk. So I would like to start with our motivation. So this graph is a kind of a prediction of the global road traffic injury death. So it's a prediction at some point and it says that if we do nothing for against this road safety, it's growing up and reach up to 1.9 million deaths per year at uh, 2020. But actually we are, we are as uh, industry, we are the, the government and the academic universities are doing a lot actually and this the actual plot can be plotted at uh, less than the worst case expectation but roughly speaking still uh, one million people are actually killed in uh, by the traffic accident every year in the world so this and our goal the dancers goal is to to uh, contribute to reduce the number of uh, this accident by enhancing the power of the technology and then so is the mega supply of the automotive uh, stuff, and we are developing a lot of stuff for, for vehicles, for example, engine, air conditioner, and electric, air electric components, and also the safety products. So we have a safety, a passive safety products for like an airbag or seat belt, which aim to, to uh, minimize the uh, damage of the driver or passengers in case of the accident. On the other hand, we also have an active safety product which aim to uh, minimize damage before uh, the accident occur uh, by uh, avoid the risk or to avoid the risk, uh, avoid escape the risk by understanding the traffic scene. For example, so you are driving this red car and you need to detect the pedestrian in front of you and other vehicles around you and to, to get the information of, of the scene. So how, so we can, we have a sensing system and also the communication system. So sensing system, so we have uh, this kind of millimeter wave radar, sense image sensor, laser radar, and uh, sonar and such kind of sensor inside the car. And we also have a communication system like vehicle to vehicle communication to get information from another vehicle or the vehicle to infra infrastructure communication. Uh, also, there's some the map in the cloud and vehicle to this cloud communication is very important. But today I'd like to focus on this image sensor stuff. And I would uh, like to introduce our activity is already uh, in, a, in a market. It, it's used in a uh, actual active safety uh, product like Toyota Safety Sense. So I can, I have a just short video clip to uh, let you uh, know some. But so this video clip is introducing the functionality of the Toyota Safety Sense. So we had a uh, first generation since 2015 and having a functionality of the pre-collision system which can uh, break instead of the uh, driver to reduce the uh, damage of the accident. Right. And it ha also has a pedestrian detection functionality to, to avoid the accident between vehicle and human. Yeah, and this system is al already used more than 5 million cars in the world, and this is a very successful case. And the second generation we had, uh, this, this has uh, also the, this uh, pre collision system at night, so sorry, sorry, <laughs> suddenly it's in Japanese, and, but basically it can be done in, at night also, right? 
sensor do you use? Or I think it's the image sensor mainly. And also in this case, so we have uh, several versions, but the rad uh, radar and uh, the image sensors. So I have a question so, so the, the, the infrared sensor can be used, actually. But it depends on the, the version and the, the system. Does the system have infrared? No, no, I don't know, sorry. And uh, yes, uh, so we have a second generation now, and and we believe that uh, this performance and functionality can be uh, improved by advanced uh, deep learning technology. This already uses deep learning, or I think not, but it's it's you know I can't say something. I I guess <laughs> no. <laughs> and here I show the approach to make good not only deep learning, but also the, the, the machine learning products. So here I have a, tw a triangle. The most important part of the, to make a safety product is the data, because we have to verify the system is really, really safe. And in order to evaluate and verify that whether there is a safety or not, so we need to have uh, enough amount of data and also the enough good quality. So in order to do that, we are gathering a bunch of data and annotate it with a lot of annotators. So we are managing that annotator efficiently and to make a bunch of data to evaluation and also the training. And we also have a good computer and we also have to have some good algorithm. So where we are having a lot of the collaborators to, to make good algorithm together. And so our strategy is just maximize the size of this triangle and make it compact as to, to, to use the actual product inside the car. Like, so we have maybe have uh, several lines, for example this, let's say the top one is a high-end line using the uh, high-performance computer, which can be a little bit expensive, but we also have a more uh, inexpensive one using a specially designed chip, uh, which uh, has a low power consumption. And yeah, again, so this maximizes Maximize the triangle with power runs to apply the product technology is our approach. And in this slide, I, I'd like to show all the, the next step. So what, what can be the next step for of the, the, the products? So the basic question here is how do we, we human, understand the complex traffic scene while driving? So obviously, so we are relying on the visual information while driving. That's why we have to have a camera in a system. And uh, this, this uh, scene, it's, it's fetched from this uh, JAFMATE channel where you can find a uh, lot of the risky, potential risky scene and uh, get uh, some uh, useful advices from them. And in this particular scene, so, so assume that you are driving in the urban street in Japan, uh, a little bit crowded, and uh, there is an intersection in front of you with green signal, and you're supposed to go straight. Uh, and what should you care about? What's happening in the next moment? What do you think? And maybe you need 10 seconds to think, maybe. But actual case, you have only one or two seconds to do that. And actually, this woman on the left side just cut into your lane. So how we can detect how you can we can predict that so there is there are actually hints over there there was a woman and this people in front of her are just blocking her path and there is also if you carefully look in there is some the free space to escape that people and then you can just okay she might come cut in and you have to reduce your speed or just stop to avoid the risk, uh, to avoid the accident. Uh, but currently, current generation system, it's very tough situation actually. It's, it's too complicated and we can do that. And we need the deeper scene understanding with a uh, non-expensive sensor. So first is to this 3D, 300 degree in detail uh, recognition as needed. So the 3D means uh, not only the 2D position, but also the distance, and also the wider field of view, and in data, not only this box, but also the shape 
might be crucial for some scene. So we have to get to, to recognize the uh, structure of the scene first. And using that, so we can just predict what's happening in the next moment. Uh, but the interaction is more advanced, more difficult, because you have to take uh, care about the, the interaction among road users in front of you, but also your ac real action, the action of the ego, ego vehicle affects also to the road users and the road users behavior ever affect to, to ourselves. So this kind of bi-directional interaction should be taken into account to avoid risk. And once we can the understand the scene, so it's also challenging and interesting to describe the scene in natural world. Imagine that if somebody is sitting just beside you and give you some useful advice in a natural language wh while driving when we need it. So this kind of agent is really uh, interesting for us, but there is no uh, concrete uh, technique to do that. So it's uh, still open. And those functionality should be done with uh, inexpensive sensors because if you add many sensors, it can be very really, really expensive and no very limited people can use it. And it doesn't make road safer. So this inexpensive sensors is very, very uh, key issue for us. Then we can just improve the current generation to get a better application in the next generation. And the, the example is that the yeah, ultimate goal is autonomous driving, of course. But before that, we can have a lot of improvement, we think. For example, the past suggestion or advice in natural language, or it's, and also it's for more people. And yeah, we think that image sensor and deep learning make system more intelligent and less expensive, which is very, very Im are important for uh, making roads safer. And let me introduce some of our, our activities. So we are doing uh, this 3D, 3D 360 degree in data recognition so far. So we are gathering the data using the panoramic camera system, and we drove uh, in a crowded city in Tokyo to, to get uh, some uh, input image shown in top line. And we have object detection and semantic segmentation. And also we have a depth estimation. So this are so then uh, and the post pose estimation. And this object detection you can clearly see the red box around the pedestrian and also the three D uh, the vehicle is detected in a three D manner. And you can see the city bounding box by estimating the not only the position but also the orientation of the vehicle. And the semantic segmentation is very useful to detect the free space particularly because this the free space is very difficult to define the shape. So then this uh, pixel wise classification is very, very useful for that. And the depth estimation, we had uh, the laser scanner as a uh, ground truth data and we trained the neural network model to just estimate the depth of the each pixel by taking the uh, single input image as the input. And we have uh, the pose estimation. It's, it's very useful to uh, detect the, the pedestrian and also that to know the intention of the pedestrian, which is very, very important to, to predict what what's his or she is going to do. And I, sh I have a video clip. Yeah, you can see this, like, those, there are five cameras input and th these are recognition are independently done. And you can see this our input image is the pedestrian is detected and free space and our pedestrian are more detailed are the recognized and also there's the depth estimation. So white color means the uh, near side that the black color is the far side and you can just estimate from this single image how far is each pixel by, by uh, the trained model. And also there's uh, pose estimation as successfully recognized using this pose estimator. And we are just doing it the separately right now, but we are just co are integrating it, it. And it's still the development stage, but we will apply it for actual product in the next generation to make it all safer. Yep. The depth of the free space is estimated by a single image. Yep. Yeah. Or, or done by single image estimation. There's no. What is the error? Sorry. The, the error. 
mean, you mean the, the, the error the rate? Uh, yeah, of course, there is a transmission error depending on the distance from 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 the ego beak the, from the camera to the actual object, right. and it's the error is increasing if the distance is far away because there's no our uh, ground truth data. We use uh, the Verlin lidar as a ground truth, and it's like I don't know six to seven meter six range meter. range, yeah. it, uh, and which is very sparse in in this range. Right. You know, you know, yeah, and it's very difficult to train. But in in the near field, it's very very good actually, and we can just reduce other sensors, like stereo <laughs> camera or laser radar, and like that. Of course, we 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 might have uh, many sensors in uh, in the actual product, but there is uh, some redundancy. So we need to have a redundancy. But if we if you can do that, this the single image depth estimation, which uh, can help this sensor fusion. So you you flatter the control with inference that you don't have. No, 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 we don't need it. Yeah. Yeah, this is an ongoing project, and we have a lot of open issues actually. And uh, let me just briefly and in, uh, introduce what's the open issues. So we have four fields mainly. The prediction is the most crucial part. Like, yeah, what's happening in the next? So obviously it's, it's crucial, and we we found a very very interesting. Uh, research for by by Kitani, which is activity forecasting, where you you can uh, predict the path of this pedestrian, taking the semantic information into account. So, if, for example, here is the uh, the road, and here is the sidewalk, so that this pedestrian is tend to go this sidewalk because it's safer. So, just taking this semantic information into account and predict uh, the the future. It's it's very important. And we found also found this the blind corner recognition is also very interesting because uh, it, when you're driving, you you are driving in a narrow street with low visibility. Somebody will in the, in the blind spot, but there's no basically uh, information. But if you carefully look at the, the ground, so you can just somehow detect or recognize what's happening in the blind spot. It's still I think the research phase, but it can be very very. Uh, interesting uh, things for prediction. And also, uh, we are interested in and, uh, intention and quality and stuff like that. And in interaction, as I said, it's a bit more difficult, but we need to do that because there are a lot of scenes wi where we need uh, interaction. For example, lane changing or merging at the junction. So you have to negotiate with other vehicle or other, other road users. And you have to make decision negotiating each other. And to do that, we think uh, reinforced learning is a key, but there's an open discussion of so what, what should be the input, what should be the output of that to for, for the autonomous driving. Uh, and we are just starting the, the preliminary study, but it's still open. And the description, uh, so there's a very interesting work uh, called image captioning, where you can take image as input and output the text which is describing what's happening in this scene. So if you apply it to the vehicle, just system is seeing the outside or inside the vehicle and saying uh, what's happening in the natural language, which you can understand, which is very int uh, important for making a good intelligent agent, for example. And also generated to that, this the text, text recognition in image can be very useful because in the image, there are a lot of the text, and text has a rich information. And if you can just understand and translate it to, to, to that, for example, if you have to drive in Japan, you can't maybe read these characters and get some trouble. And if, if the system can understand that, translate it to your language, it's very useful. And the optimization, so we have uh, two meanings. Uh, to to set up so one is a hyperparameter of the deep deep neural network to optimize more efficiently and also the model compression if which is called the model compression to make a model more more compact which is very important for actual product like quantization or uh, tensor decomposition or pruning and and the distillation and to do that. We think we can't do that by ourselves, and we need, we are looking for new partners, some intelligent partners like you for future advanced products. 
And this is take home message last slide. So Denso is developing intelligent and inexpensive active safety product based on deep learning technology. And second, so we are looking for new partners for better scene recognition and open issues. So that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>